Radio Dynamic Services now can call in to SharePoint and all of the pieces are already in place for you to query that information out of the SharePoint database using simply a URL. Really powerful concept. So, if you saw my previous talk, I'm now describing the second client object model, or API in this case, the RESTful API. REST stands for representative, representative state transfer. You'll never need to know that. It effectively means I'm using a URL to go get data, okay, or update data. There you go, representative state transfer. All right, so what can I get at? I can get at all of the things in SharePoint that are data oriented. I'm not gonna be updating content databases. I'm not gonna be doing administrative kind of work, right? This is about data access. So think ADO.net wrote stuff to get information out of SharePoint metadata or data, but not, you know, administrative things, okay, right? You can get other things, like you can get a spreadsheet data, you can go out to the cloud. This is a very up and coming standard that says URL should be focused on this particular presentation such that you can get information from anywhere. Uh, as, uh, it's not Rainier, how do you say it? Reiner. Reiner, as Reiner pointed out, search engine optimization is a really powerful technique because you can specify a URL that's effectively an application and one location will get information over and over again for search engines to go and query your stuff and make it available to end users. Very cool idea. All right, so it's an up and coming uh, standard that we're gonna be using here. Let me talk a little bit about the syntax. So you can see that we're gonna use an underscore VTI underscore bin location. This is effectively where web services or exposing data through some kind of external mechanism have been for quite a few years in SharePoint. In this case, it's called listdata.svc, again, a WCF service. That WCF service is hardwired to work with all the lists and libraries and web that you find in the context of that particular virtual location. Right, so VTI bin slash listdata.svc, you can pass in the, the entity. The entity is like the list. What is the container I'm after? Then the identifier. You can specify sort of a where clause. This is sort of like if you have square brackets around the collection that you're after. This is the one I want for the identifier. And then finally, any properties that you'd like. And you can specify one or more properties as you move forward, right? So this URL can just expand out to bring back any of the information that you're after. There's a quick example of how to use the properties request on the bottom. I'm gonna go after the project number four and get its budget hours. So you can see how specific this query can be if I'm after a, a given set of information, wherever you happen to pick this stuff up, right? The next example shows you, once again, the entity, but this time with a filter on it. So I can give a little simple predicate. In this case, look at the sample again. I'm saying where the client is equal to, uh, sorry, the client, which is the entity, and its property called city is equal to Vegas. So I'll pick up all of the list items that have Vegas as their city. Very powerful way to screen out the specific list items that you're looking for. And another example here is uh, expand. Think of expand like a join. So remember I told you, REST will let you do rich relational information present, uh, to present back how my, remember my three tables? I've got the client, which has multiple projects, projects which has multiple time cards. So I can say, give me a client and all of its projects in one XML request. And it will automatically shape that so that I get all the information back in a hierarchical XML file. Very powerful approach. So think expand, think join, all right? So here's all the various tokens and parameters that you can use on that query screen. Filter will take a simple predicate, city equals, uh, so entity slash property equals something. Uh, expand, I just described, that's a way to join things together. Order by, skip, and top are sort of obvious, right? I want to bring back the results in a certain order. I want you to skip to number 100, and, or I want you to give me the top 10. Those kinds of things. Uh, the very bottom one is a little bit interesting. So slash, or dollar sign metadata for a given location will bring back all of the items in that location. If you're familiar, again, with web services, think Wizzle. 
So dollar metadata is the whistle for the specific load SharePoint site, all of its lists and all of its properties that you can bring back, all of the relationships of those lists. So that then you can then go and say, oh, I see everything that's in this context. Let me go ahead and make another query. Very powerful sort of whistle based approach to doing things. So I'm going to go through a demo. Oh, by the way, down here, this is the URL that documents everything that I just said in excruciating some technical detail. But everything I just said makes it really simple for you to understand how it works. So that's the information that I'm describing there. I'm going to go through a really quick demo.